Now I'd like to introduce you to Jack Killian. Jack is not only one of the top entrepreneurs I know, but he's one of the best networkers I know. And I'm pleased to have him here to talk to us a bit about his networking skills and what he can teach us about how to network effectively. Jack Killian. Hi, I'm Jack Killian, the professor here at Fairleigh Dickinson University in New Jersey. I'm also the general partner of an investment fund that I started eight years ago, and I serve on the board, and I'm an advisor to several corporations and nonprofits. And all these experiences give me access to a wide range of people who, when I work with them closely, all help enrich my life. And in the classes I teach here at Fairleigh Dickinson, which are mostly business classes, I really emphasize to the students the need to get really skilled at networking. And to me, networking is simply, it's a simple concept of simply developing win-win, sustainable, long-term relationships with the people that you meet as you go through your life. I found uh, everybody, to some extent or another, networks. Even when we're little kids, we start our networking habits by going to birthday parties, having sleepovers, playing Little League baseball, playing on traveling soccer teams. So networking is something that we get familiar with at an early age. But then as we grow older, often through high school, we lose a lot of those skills and we lose the importance that developing relationships with people needs to have. And for any college student today, I think networking is a critical skill and is something that you absolutely need to master if you want to have a successful major league career. Um, why network? We simply live in a very complex global world today. We're all part of various communities. Our family is a community. Our school is a community. The companies that we work with are communities. The associations we belong to are communities. And we travel around the world and expose ourselves to communities throughout the world. So the world is becoming a place that's tough to live in. It's challenging. It's competitive. And we all need the support of as many really great, interesting, competent, successful people as we can find. When, when I talk about networking, I'm really talking about two benefits that we can get from developing relationships with people. The first one is simply the, the development of new knowledge uh, that we acquire when we get to know somebody else. And the second thing is to access uh, ourselves to other connections that the people we get to know have, who in turn can pass us on to other people. So networking is really a multi-layer way of enhancing our lives. The steps that you need to pay attention to if you want to be a successful networker is simply, number one, reach out to everybody. Get comfortable uh, having a sense of uh, curiosity about other people. Talk to everybody that you meet with. If you're in line at a supermarket, talk to the person in front of you. If you're sitting on a subway in New York City, talk to the person next to you. If you're walking down the street and you come to a red light, talk to the person standing next to you. Uh, if you're sitting in a doctor's office, talk to that person. The more people you can talk to with a real sense of genuine interest in the, in the person, the better you're going to be at this technique. You have to devote time to it. I, th I think for uh, people in college, you should be spending at least five hours a week developing relationships with new people. As you begin to grow your career and you get out in the working, working world, I think uh, people need to be spending a minimum of 10 hours a week developing new relationships. Uh, I know that I certainly practice that habit, and it pays off. Once you meet somebody new, you have to constantly find ways to stay in touch. That's one of the beauties of the internet and email. It gives us the ability to stay in touch with people anywhere, any place in the world, at any time, at our convenience. So once you meet somebody new, it's really imperative that then you begin to find ways to sustain that relationship, finding as many ways to stay in touch consistently as possible. One of the things, one of the real uh, things that you should focus on in developing your network is connecting the people you know to other people you know. It's a really mutual rewarding opportunity for everybody involved in the process. If you want to be successful at networking, there are certain things that you have to do and certain characteristics that you have to have. You absolutely have to have a genuine interest in people. You can't fake it. You have to be interested in everything about them, what they're doing, and you have to be constantly looking for new ways to make a contribution to their life whether it's a personal contribution by recommending a book or a movie or a play or a restaurant or a spa or a getaway place for a weekend or a possible new career move or a school that might be considered for a graduate degree. Look for ways to contribute to the people that you meet. And never try to keep score. 
if, if you find that you're, you're doing more things to help other people and you don't feel like it, that's being reciprocated, don't worry about it. That's, that's sometimes just the way the world is. The good people that you run into during your lifetime are going to be more than willing to reciprocate and pay you back for all the good things that you do to help them. You should have focus. You don't want to necessarily network with everybody. You want to meet as many people as you can, but then you want to narrow down your networking efforts to the people who have the most interest in common with you, the most uh, uh, knowledge in common with you. So you want to focus on people that you can really do a good job of exchanging information and contacts with going forward. Uh, everybody, and I advise this to everybody that I teach in, at the college level, and it also applies to high school kids, everybody should have a business card. If you, if you meet people and you have a great initial exchange with them, you absolutely need to have some way of letting them get in contact with you, and a business card is the only way I, I really know how to do that. And business cards make a great gift. If you have a younger brother or sister or a grandmother, I, I suggest the next time you need to buy a gift, you buy them business cards. And you can be really creative with the titles that you give them. Uh, the best business card title I ever saw was on a, a person who started a $5 billion company. And his business card title was simply Human Being. And I thought that said it all about my friend David. Um, another uh, trick to successful networking is get involved in the right groups. There are plenty of formal networking groups out there. But networking groups can also be a PTA organization or an alumni association of the college that you graduate from. It could be a, a men's or a women's evening golf league. It could be a, a group that plays poker periodically. So get involved with groups that have similar interests to your own. Why do people fail to maximize their networking abilities? I think there are several uh, key reasons. The first thing is they don't recognize how important it is. If you're not doing a good job networking today, you're going to be left so far behind in the dust that it won't even be funny. Your life will not be anywhere near what it could be without a successful ability to network. Uh, some people are shy. Some people are uncomfortable reaching out to new people. Well, in this day and age, as competitive as the global world is, you simply have to forget being shy, and you have to teach yourself to be uh, comfortable reaching out to new people and having an interest in people and exploring uh, their, their lives and the things that you have in common. A lot of people don't think they can be good at it. I happen to think that everybody can be good at it if they work hard at it, and there's no excuse for not being good at it. Uh, some people simply fail at networking because they don't put in the time. I think you have to allocate a certain amount of time every week consistently to simply get out and meet new people. And in my case, as a, as a person who's out working, I use breakfast meetings. Uh, before my day starts, I use weekend breakfast, weekend lunch meetings. So I fit it into a pretty hectic schedule, but I manage to get in about 10 hours a week of networking with people. And some people are just sloppy. Even if they happen to meet somebody very interesting, they get sloppy about following up. And this world is moving so fast, and the rate of change is so fast. If you're not st constantly staying in front of the good people that you meet, you're going to be out of sight, out of mind. So you have to find a way to stay in touch with people. What's involved in putting together a networking plan? First of all, if you don't already have business cards, go out and get business cards. Pick the targets, if you can, of people that you want to meet. Sometimes it will pay to simply reach out cold to somebody to create a new relationship. Uh, start practicing your skill right away. As soon as you're, you're done watching this little vignette, I suggest you uh, try to say hello to three new people before the end of the day. Uh, develop and maintain a database. Uh, I have over 3,000 names in my database, and I'm adding to it constantly. And I try to stay in touch with as many of those people as possible. I probably stay in touch regularly with about six or 700 people on at least a monthly basis. OK, just to wrap up what we've been talking about here today, uh, I've emphasized how important networking is as a lifetime skill that everybody can develop from the very youngest among us to the oldest. Uh, in this competitive environment, we, have, uh, we all need the support of people throughout the world. And developing a network, uh, an effective network, is one of the simplest, most cost-effective ways of really uh, enhancing our lives. We've talked about the steps required to be a successful networker, which means devoting adequate time to it, taking a genuine interest in people, reaching out to everybody, finding ways to stay in touch, and looking for ways to contribute to the other person's life. We talked about some of the success factors for networking, not keeping score being one of them, have focus, always have